Are you looking for a f fun first project to do in the lathe? Something to build your woodwork turning skills? Something that will help you develop both turning, roughing, details, maybe some drilling, and of course, sanding skills, and last but not least, finishing skills? I got the perfect project for you. A pepper grinder. Now we'll be making one like this, nice big unit like this today in the project. Has all the key skills and it's something you can do in a day. So stay tuned, we'll get into that right now. Hey, welcome back to the Woodcrafting Place. Ray Booth in here. Awesome project today. I have a special request for a wide bottom pepper mill to be a little bit more stable on a customer's table. We'll play lots of music and we'll get through this in a nice quick project. Let's get to it. Okay, as with any project, you start out roughing out the wood so that we can get ready to go to the lathe. You can see from the log that we're using for this pepper mill, it's going to be approximately four inches in diameter by eight inches long and we're going to get ourselves a hunk on the bandsaw then we're going over to the lathe and turning it down and we'll drill it process it all the way through the shaping finish and we'll all be done so keep watching hey and if you like what you see today make sure you hit the thumb smash that thumb to let us know that the content we bring you is of value that you enjoy it and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell that way you're notified each week of all the content we bring you to help improve your woodworking knowledge you can enjoy your time in the shop more so the first thing I'll do is I'll cut it up in the bandsaw trying to bring get rid of all the extra wood and for a large piece like this I'll trim off the corners that way when I get over to the lathe it's a little less abusive on the tools and on my hands once it's ready, over to the lathe we go. Now in this case, I'll turn it basically round to get it close to the size that I need. And then I'll part it into two pieces. So I only have to work with one half at a time. Now we're turning it down to approximate rough maximum diameter, four and a quarter inches. This is the size I also need for my other woodworking chuck. This way I have a part that's ready to drill and while I'm at it I'll square off the end that way I have a nice square round block to work with so now that we've moved over to the chuck you'll see we're drilling and in this case because of the larger size of this pepper mill I'll drill the center hole all the way down now in this configuration that can drill it in two pieces smaller pepper mills I frequently drill on the drill press before I do any turning around so that way I can mount on the hole and make sure that the whole pepper mill is exactly centered around the center of the opening in the pepper mill and everything is symmetric and spins true this is the top which needs a smaller hole that way the shaft is held closely of course, I'll be turning it down to rough size using the parting tool. So as I start making it to shape, the parting tool will get me close to the final diameters wherever I put my slices. Once I have my slices from my parting tool, I use a combination of a detail gouge and I love my round scraper and a shear scraping configuration which gives me a super fine slice and, and wood chip so I get a really smooth finish. I get this right down to a near smooth finished configuration that needs just a small amount of sanding. I'll zip through the grits all the way up to 600. Once I'm done with that, I'll use a triple E polishing compound. This gives me a glassy smooth finish. Now we're on to the bottom of the pepper mill. Remember, I drilled a one inch hole all the way down the center of this with a larger hole in the back end, or the bottom end, excuse me. Now it's time to mark all my diameters and get my caliper all set. It's time to go back to the parting tool. 
just like the top I'll make a series of slits and those slits will give me my diameters that way I know where, basically where to stop to get the shape that I desire now we're back to the detail gouge this allows me to shape my pepper mill to just the right shape exactly what I want now we're getting close now we need to cut trim off the end piece that way we get down to our final length I usually leave a little on the end that way I can come back and really dial in the final length just like the top time the to sand into the grits back all the way up to 600 grit and yes I use the polishing compound which is triple E abrasive compound in a wax it's called a cut wax and that again gives me a really smooth finish and there it is all done ready for finishing and assembly I'm using a food safe oil here and final assembly that's all that's next once it's assembled we'll put our mechanism and shaft and I use a ceramic grinding mechanism in the bottom of it that way it stands up to all kinds of pepper and herbs as well as salt you can also use salt in these because of the ceramic grinding mill Okay, so we're all done of all the pepper mills I've made this is without a doubt the most stable that I've ever made and it's super heavy the maple really makes this a substantial item for your table and with the large footprint this will make quite a statement in the middle of your table I especially appreciate the inspiration from the customer that's getting this special item this was as a result of a specific request from one of my customers so Thank you very much. This, this was awesome. I really enjoyed making it as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed how we made this. And maybe you learned something from it. If you liked what you saw in this video, make sure you hit the thumb. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. That way you're notified each week. And all the content we bring to help you increase your woodworking knowledge. And all the tools that I used will be listed down in the description. Really appreciate you joining me today. Have yourself a great day, and I will see you again real soon.